And let's begin. How do I find slope between two points if I don't have a graph? You use y2 minus y1, x2 minus x1. Does it matter which is y2 and which is y1? No. Who decides that? You do. I am going to make these guys x2 and y2 and x1 and y1. So it is 0 minus 2 over 3 minus minus 4. Negative 2 over 7. Doesn't matter which way you did the question. If you filled it in right, you're going to end up with either negative 2 over 7 or Two over negative seven, but they're the exact same thing. Give yourself two marks if you did it right. Good morning, Stafford. Good morning. 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 Some of you are going to have done the question not the way I asked you to do it, but you're still going to have gotten the right answer, okay? Which means you're going to have to lose a little bit of credit because I said to use slope-intercept form, which is, oops, which is y equals mx plus b. Remembering that M is the slope and B is the y-intercept. This part of this equation looks right, doesn't it? Which part, the left or the right side? Which part of that looks right? Don't say the right side looks right because it's on the right. Don't be wise asses. I know it's dad joke Thursday. Which one of the, which side of that equation looks the same as our goal equation, which is here. Pardon me, Aiden? No, I'm at, okay. I'm going to try and make it a little easier for you because apparently I've made the question too difficult. That is the left side of the equation. That is the right side of the equation. I want the equation to look like this purple one. Which of those sides looks okay right now? The left side. So the right side is wrong. The right side needs to have y by itself. How do I get rid of that 2 in 2y? Two divide it. So if I divide that side by 2, what must I do to this side? Divide everything by 2. And now I have 3 over 2x minus 2 equals y. Do those look the same? Yes. Which means you now know that the y-intercept is negative 2. 1, 2. And you know the slope, which is the rise divided by the run from any given point on the graph. Do I have a point on the graph? Yes, the y-intercept. Now all I gotta do is count rise and run from there. What is a rise of positive three? Up, one, two, three. What is a run of positive two? To the right, one, two. Now, Mr. Myers always says use three dots. So I'm going to go back to the original one and go where? Down, one, two, three, and left, one, two. And I'm going to put my third dot. When it allows me to. While you are marking it, you get two points for the algebra and you get one point for the graph. Now listen to me. If you didn't do this, 
but you graphed it properly, you maybe used X and Y intercepts, then you get one point still for the graph, but you only get one over here unless you remember to put it in slope intercept form like I asked you to do. So this is out of two, this is out of one, making the whole question out of three. Is everybody good? Does anybody have a question to ask me about that? Now, normally I don't do that to you, do I? Normally I let you solve the problem however you wish. But this particular form is very useful and I would like to see you start using it. All right? Question three. This one says using X and Y intercepts. What is every single x-intercept? No. X, zero. What is every single y-intercept? Zero y. Zero y. These values are x's, these values are y's. What do you see right there? X. What do you see right there? Y. Do you see values that you can put in there? Yes, there is an X. So I have 6X plus 3 times what? Zero. zero plus 12 equals 0. 3 times 0 is what? 0, so it drops out. 6x plus 12 equals 0. I need the x. How do I find it? How do I get an answer when I have that equation? I got to subtract 12 because I'm trying to isolate the x. 6x equals negative 12. Then what? 6 and x equals what? Negative 2. There's an x. So what can I write there now? Negative two. Should I put this dot on the graph yet? No, why not? I don't know the y-intercept. I might need to change scales. So then I do the same thing with y. Six times what? Zero plus three y plus 12 equals zero. 3y plus 12 equals 0. 3y equals negative 12. y equals negative 4. What can I write there? Do I now have two points I can put on the graph? What are they? Negative 2, 0, right there. And 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. Negative 4. And I just connect the dots. Now, Mr. Myers always says, make sure you put three dots. So, one, two, three, four, one, two. One, two, three, four, one, two. There's your line. Again, it's out of three marks. Two for the algebra. And one for the graph. You decide. Everybody is good? Please notice that we have been doing a lot of X and Y, X and Y, X and Y in this unit, correct? Do you think that will continue? Yeah, it will. This part was garbage. It wasn't part of anything. I don't know why it printed there. And the last thing. Find Y if that's the slope. What do I know if I have a slope, an x, and an x, and a y, and a y? I know that slope equals y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. Do I have the information to fill in every part of this? I am missing one y, correct? But everything else I can fill in, yeah? Great. So what goes on the left for slope? Negative 5 fourths. Can I write it that way? Can I put the negative on top? Yep. Could I write it this way? Yep. 
Could I write it this way? No. Why? Two negatives make a positive. Okay. Great. What do I want to write in for Y2? What do I want to put there? One? Sure. Minus what? Y. Excellent. Over what? Negative three minus five. Simplify everywhere I can. Where can I simplify that? This denominator, correct? So what I have, when my computer allows me to write it, is, is negative five over four equals one minus y over negative eight. How do I solve every single question that's fraction equals fraction? Cross. What is negative 5 times negative 8? Negative 40? Positive 40 equals what's 4 times 1? 4. Minus what's 4 times y? 4y. How do I solve that? Subtract 4, subtract 4, 36 equals negative 4y. Now what? Divide, Divide by what? Negative 4. And y equals negative 9 for two marks. Making the whole thing out of 3 and 3 is 6. I think out of 10, right? Yep. Whole thing is out of 10. Any questions? No? Okay. Next thing I asked about was page 194. Did anybody want to discuss anything about parallel and perpendicular lines from page 194? Of course you have the answers. Anybody? Number nine. Thank you, Avery. Number nine. So I need to decide if they're parallel, perpendicular, or neither. So if they are parallel, then the slope of ST and the slope of UV will be what? If they're parallel. They'll be equal. What if they're perpendicular? Opposite and flipped. What if they're neither? Then they'll be totally different, right? So all I got to do is find the slopes. So the first one I find is the slope of S and T, which is 5 plus 1 over negative 1 plus 4, right? Because it's 5 minus minus 1. So that's 6 over 3, which equals 2. Cool? Then, I just do the same thing over here, which would be uh, negative 1 minus 1 over 5 minus 1. Negative 1 minus 1 is negative 2. 5 minus 1 is 4. Negative 2 over 4 is what, really? negative one half, right? Is that and that opposite reciprocals? So these guys are perpendicular. That was what you did, or what you needed to do. If this had come out to be two, they would be parallel. If it had come out to be anything else, they're neither. Everybody cool? All right. Any other questions from 194? Sweet. Okay, now, listen. It's a short day. Apparently, the kids in the school are so bad that we need five minutes to list off the pack list when we only have 60. You will never have to worry about it, Ayaka. You go to class and you do your work. You'll be fine. Pack is Panther jail. But not like real jail. Nobody has to go. 
They just keep saying their names over and over and over again. So you get PAC for not coming to school. You don't go to PAC and then they tell you to not come to school. Sweet deal. I have never understood punishing people who don't come to school by telling them not to come to school. Really, what you should do is kick, kick them out. Oh. End of discussion. Oh. You don't want to come to school? Okay, goodbye. Oh. Buh, buh, buh. There's five other schools here. You could go to Bateman. You could go to Hanson. You could go to ATS. Six other schools. Then if you want to be here, why wouldn't you come to class? You never miss class, at least my class. So you're not an issue, right? But if you don't want to be here, why are we wasting time on you? Uh, anyway, as I was saying, um, it is a short day, we don't have time, and you're about to embark on a four-day weekend. Does it make sense to teach you something completely new that you have never seen before? No. Absolutely not. But fortunately, in this unit, I have made sure that I have some pages in the book for just such an emergency. Because right now, in the first semester, it's about Christmas time, which is when everybody's brain turns off in the first semester. In the second semester, it turns off at the end of May. Oh, what's the date? May 17th. It's almost like I've done this before. So, on page 196, Yours, yours doesn't say assignment. Yours says practice. What should you be doing? Practicing. Practicing. Please notice the very first question says use that form. Go. I'll see you on Tuesday. But I'm going to be here till the end of the block. Well, I believe we're supposed to wear something. I don't know. That would require reading emails. I read emails when they d apply to me in some kind of professional. Now, what, what are you saying I should wear? What is a cut suit? Oh. So when you buy a shirt two sizes too small, like a dude, so it looks like your muscles are bigger? I know that move. 